Now the arrival of more than 550 migrants in small boats over the bank holiday Sunday and Monday has taken the toll, n total number of people crossing the channel this year past 7,000. Well, our South East of England reporter Ellie Costello is in Dover for us now. Ellie, look, thank you very, very much for joining us on this show today. Ellie, could you just give us an update really on the number of people crossing the channel over the weekend, please? Well, good morning, Patrick and Mercy. It has been a really busy weekend down here in Dover. We had really fantastic weather and the sea was flat, which always means there's going to be a high number of migrant crossings. And the Ministry of Defence says that 254 migrants were detected in seven boats on Sunday. They've just released yesterday's numbers. 293 people arrived in nine boats uh, yesterday. That was Monday. Uh, so the Arrivals in Dover this weekend, those numbers are high. Um, it follows an 11 day break. So people were hoping that that was due to the Rwanda plan. It was putting people off making that crossing. But those high numbers over the weekend suggest that that was more likely down to uh, the bad weather that, that was uh, prior to this weekend. Um, and those figures from this weekend bring this year's total of small boat crossings to 7,000. Last year, 20 28,000 migrants were detected making that journey from France to the UK. So at that rate, it's now forecast that that figure will almost double to nearly 60,000 by the end of this year. Now, this weekend, the majority of people that were being pulled off those small boats and brought into the harbour here at Dover, they were men. There were some women and some children as well, but the majority of them were young men. And let's not forget how dangerous dangerous this journey can be. 37 people drowned in the channel last year. And if these high numbers keep continuing, there are fears that we could see more fatalities on the channel. Um, so obviously it does appear as though uh, that Rwanda deal hasn't been much of a deterrent so far, Ellie, doesn't it? That, that seems to be the message that coming through at the moment that the Rwanda deal has not as yet been a deterrent. Not yet, it seems. It might actually be having the opposite effect, in fact. Uh, an MP in Calais has claimed that the Rwanda policy is actually uh, forcing the human trafficking gangs that operate on the French and Belgian coasts to encourage migrants to get this journey underway before the Rwanda deal actually comes into play. Uh, they're encouraging them to get on with it quickly uh, before that actually comes into force. Um, and totally Tony Smith, who's a former director general of Border Force, says that unless people are seeing people get on those flights and seeing those packed flights heading to Rwanda, they're going to keep trying to get across before that comes into force. Now, Boris Johnson was hoping to have those flights to Rwanda heading off at the end of this month, but there have been legal challenges mounted by three uh, different groups. So uh, the Home Office is understood to be challenging uh, those now. Um, those, those charities are Care for Calais, Detention Action and the Public and Commercial Services Union. And they are claiming that this Rwanda uh, plan breaches the Refugee Convention and human rights laws. Um, I think it's also worth noting that Care for Calais, they did a survey of migrants uh, in Calais. They said that 87% 80, had heard of the Rwanda plan. 75% of them said it wouldn't put them off coming to the UK. Mm, interesting stuff. All right, Ellie, look, thank you very, very much. Ellie Costello there reporting to us from the scene, essentially, really, where we're seeing still an influx of migrants coming across the channel there, despite the announcement of the Rwanda scheme. Interesting figures there, I thought, from Ellie as well, actually, there, about the uh, care for Calais. I mean, yeah. to be fair, that's a it was rather that, one sided charity. That, that 75% saying it wouldn't deter them, uh, apparently. I mean, I don't know. Well, we haven't how seen many a plane yet, have we? Yeah, but I think. Uh, <laughs> If that is accurate, um, I think it's a reflection of the fact many uh, of the people who would take that risk to come across the channel, maybe they don't think the government would go through with that plan, would actually yeah. follow through. Maybe they think it is just... I mean, they're sort of uh, calling the government's bluff and saying, 
well, we're still come because we don't mm. really believe that you will put us uh, on a plane and send us to Rwanda. Maybe it's a reflection of Home Office incompetence. Yeah, quite possibly. And you know what? They'd be forgiven for it in a sense because the Home Office and Priti Patel in particular haven't covered themselves in glory thus far. But, but, but I do think, I'll stand by it, if we start seeing these planes take off, I think that figure will drop yeah. significantly.